Thank you very much, Oscar. Thank you very much for giving us uh, that perspective. Um, I'd like to invite, I'd like to invite Alfie to come and give his part. Thank you, Ben, and good afternoon. Good morning, members. My name is Alfred Kamiansamba, and I work for Let's Go Travel. I'm just going to go straight into this so that uh, we, we get as much out of this session as possible. Um, to start with, I'd like to discuss recovery. Recovery is defined as an action or a process of regaining a possession or control of something that has been lost or stolen. And in this instance, we're particularly talking about the tourism industry in Uganda as to what has been lost and what actions auto can assist or can take directly to firstly assist us, the members, during this time of uncertainty, and secondly, to prepare its members, <coughs> excuse me, what happens when this crisis passes? And we're all confident that this crisis will pass. So from my perspective, um, there isn't one single course of action that anyone can take that will solve everything that's going on at the moment, and that will solve and help us during this time of uncertainty. So in order to tackle this problem, I would suggest that we must categorize what needs to happen. So we need to, we need to know what form of assistance we need. The second point is we need to know who is best placed to provide that assistance. And thirdly, we need to work out how auto can help us do that. The majority of auto members need assistance in the five following headings. Salaries for employers, sorry, for employees and employers. Rent needs to be paid. Outstanding loans need to be paid. Tax and SSF as members assistance in kickstarting the tourism industry within Uganda or assisting in that kickstart when the crisis finishes. So how can auto help meet these challenges and help its members? I'd like to suggest that this can happen in four specific ways. The first is auto providing direct financial assistance for companies. And in order to do this, we must ask ourselves when ask auto the following questions. Firstly, does auto have money to dispense to members? Secondly, if it does, how much can go to each member? Thirdly, under what criteria would this member be given, sorry, this money be given to the members? And finally, is there an existing mechanism that auto can use to give money to the members or does one need to be created? So those four questions need to be asked around the initial point of direct financial assistance from water itself. The second way water can help is by lobbying to obtain capital financial assistance so on behalf of the members can lobby private sector organizations who have capital funds and see tourism as the vital sector in the Ugandan economy that requires assistance. Such private organizations are the World Bank and MasterCard Foundation, and Auto can lobby on behalf of its members, these organizations, to try and secure funding for its members. The second bit of lobbying that Auto can do and has been doing is lobbying the government to obtain loan restructuring, relief on VAT and SSF. And this has to be done, <coughs> excuse me, through the Ministry of Finance and Bank of Uganda. And we've seen that the chairman has, has already alluded to that. The third thing that we can be assisted by auto through lobbying is government agencies within the tourism sector. Auto can help lobby these specific agencies and get them to assist auto and auto members. We've already seen this um, with the way they have, uh, auto has, has lobbied the Uganda Wildlife Authority and some of you who have requested for permits to be rescheduled are beginning to see 
those requests being answered by the Uganda Wildlife Authority, and I'd like to congratulate them on that. Um, however, that helps us now. Looking forward, I believe that we also need to start talking about some tactical pricing for 2021 in terms of permits. We're talking perhaps about reintroducing the low season rates, but also uh, for permits, that is, but also um, talking about perhaps introducing for a limited period of time um, multi park entrance discounts. So if you have a safari that goes to maybe three national parks, um, you don't have to pay park entrance fees for each one of those. That's how auto might help in lobbying UWA. Secondly, lobbying UTB to discuss on what discounts might be available for auto members when the trade show and the trade show season um, in terms of uh, showcasing Uganda, when that starts to kick back into play, how can UTB as a government agency assist auto members in actually attending those shows because we're not getting any revenue at the moment, which is what would normally pay for us as individual companies to participate in those shows. The third way that um, auto can help its uh, members is happening right now, brainstorming. Auto can assist by being a central place for new ideas to be tabled, discussed, and actioned. Um, and from my perspective, here are a couple of examples that we can discuss today or be put on a paper that uh, gets discussed uh, moving forward. The first is uh, sourcing best practices for websites and distributing them to auto members so that those who are able to can update their websites and their social media capital called during the lockdown. I think that's very important so that um, as a company, we're still being active, although not revenue generating. Uh, the second point would be auto could assist in creating perhaps five new videos that can be used over a period of time to showcase Uganda. As auto members, we have a wealth of photographs, of, of videos, of um, interesting things that, uh, that we're able to submit to Auto. Auto members can pull all of that together, submit it to, to um, the Secretariat, who can then create these, say, five videos um, and redistribute them back to the members so that they can be used on their social media platforms. What do I say five? It, it could be five, it could be three, it could be ten. But I think we should discuss the what these videos need to be, what, what they need to entail. So one could be specifically for cultural tourism, one could be for primates, one could be for um, sustainable tourism, and then maybe one as a as a um, a summary of what you can do in Uganda. We could then ask to towel or shell. We give them a lot of revenue through all the vehicles that we, uh, that we fuel during our safaris. Then sponsor uh, an online campaign where we could put these videos on. Uh, and the whole benefit of this would be that Uganda as a destination and auto members would be in the hearts and minds of the tourism fraternity. I would just say that uh, we with UTB on this because UTB, I know, are running a from UTB as to what their marketing plan is for the country um, after this passes. It's important that we begin to understand what that's going to be so that individual companies and as auto, we can see how we're able to, to assist and also be part of that uh, marketing recovery plan. The fifth point would be, I think it's important that any current Uganda media marketing is available to auto members. As auto members and as a country, we are in lockdown, which means we can't go out there and generate new content. And yet new, there is content that's out there. If UTB and UA could make their marketing material available to auto members, we can help promote the, com the, the country as well. Instead of it only being on three social media platforms, it could be on 300 plus. And the multiplier effect of that would be huge. 
The sixth point is we need some clear advice on animal conservation post COVID-19. Um, we have a great resource in someone called Dr. Gladys Kalema Zukizoka, who today is on a panel. She's a world leader on primatological issues, and she's on a panel discussion today with, um, to do with ape conservation and zoonotic diseases, talking about how, in this case, primates and apes, but can be protected during COVID-19, but also what steps we need to take post COVID-19 to ensure that tourism doesn't harm conservation. Um, Uganda is held up as a conservation success if you look at the zero, uh, zero sanctuary in terms of rhinos and, and also um, mountain gorillas are one of the only endangered animals that are increasing in numbers. And it would be really devastating if post COVID-19 steps aren't put in place to continue that success story. So I think Auto needs to lobby with UA and uh, private sector individuals like Conservation Through Public Health to come up with uh, a set of guidelines and um, conservation best practice that can then be woven into our marketing strategy to say, not only do we want you back tourists, but this is what we've done to protect our animals and this is what we're going to do when you come in to Uganda so that they feel confident that they're not harming um, the very animals they're coming here to see. Um, another idea would be uh, to link up with tourism one up organizations all over the world and get them to showcase Uganda on our behalf. Uh, organizations such as the African Wildlife Foundation, TUF, the National Geographic, um, WWF, all of these organizations are looking for content right now to put on their media channels. And we have existing content that I know all our new Uganda Tourism Board have, and also alluded to perhaps creating new content with the help of all you um, dedicated auto members. Their channels right there which have a demographic of people that watch them, that demographic are the people who we want to attract to Uganda. The people who um, watch National Geographic, follow them on Instagram, on, on, on Facebook, are the people who we want to come and visit Uganda. So we could supply those organizations with uh, marketing and media collateral, which would benefit Uganda. Um, my final point, would be communication. We are dealing with a moving beast. What that means is um, nothing is set in stone. At any given point in time, decisions are made that affect all of us. Um, an example would be initially only category one countries weren't allowed in Uganda, then Uganda's borders were closed, and now we're in lockdown. So things are moving and this makes communication very important. Updates are very important. Updates are required because silence breeds anxiety. If you're waiting for something that doesn't come, you start getting a, a bit anxious. I'll suggest that we have deadlines and updates for whatever is decided today so that everyone knows what to expect and when to expect it. Patience is also important. If someone is asked or tasked to get something done within a certain time frame, um, then allow them the courtesy to get that done so that everyone can then benefit from that work. Um, however, if you are not going to meet that deadline, then it's also important that you let people know. So just to summarize, um, the four points that I believe auto can assist in in terms of helping us members. In, in wrapping up, I was going to say the four points where I believe auto can help us are direct fin financial assistance if available, lobbying to get that financial assistance, number two. Uh, number three, brainstorming, which is what's happening together at the moment. Uh, and number four, communication. Thank you very much. Over to you, Benedict.